For today's breakdown, we're going to look at our victory over Dallas. going to be nice talking about a win. So let's get to it. So, of course, I think that the most important quarter of this series has been the third quarter in every game. But the first quarter, you could argue, has been just as important. It's all about, as we've seen all season with the Clips, the defensive intensity. So let's look at it on this play. Doc actually made the adjustments that we were talking about in the last video and that we wanted, and that is to start Shamit instead of Reggie Jackson so we can have someone that's going to want to get rid of the ball. And Shamit's defense has been a little poor the last couple weeks of the season. But look at here. Stands his ground, gets a good contest on Tim Hardaway Jr., and most importantly, rebounds. And look what it starts for us. Now, I've been noticing a lot of players, one of the big weaknesses is finishing around the basket in today's NBA. Because we were so enamored with the three-point shot and all these shots further from the basket. You know, I noticed a lot of players, I've seen so many missed layups. But one of the people that's good around the basket is Ivica Zubats. And I love that about him. And that's put back right there. And that comes from getting stops and Shamit getting on running. It's all about our defense. Let's look at this play right here. You got Luca in the pick and roll with Dorian Finney-Smith. You got Maxi Kleba over here. You got Tim Hardaway on the left. And Porzingis up top to stretch the floor. Marcus is fighting over the screen. Fighting. And now they switch. So now Luca against Zoo. And look at Zoo. Takes the hit to the chest. Doesn't fall for this fake right here that Luca puts. Stays level and blocks the shot. I mean, that is unbelievable defense. And just what you want to see from Zoo. And they put him in the pick and roll last game. Look at Kawhi here bullying Maxi Kleba. Uh, turn around. Boom. Kobe-esque right there. Let's freeze right here. Tied at 11. Porzingis against Kawhi. You're not going to take him off the dribble. Hardaway, pick and roll. And here's the thing. When Luka's not touching the ball when he's in the game, I am breathing a sigh of relief as a Clipper fan. Like, whenever he's not touching the ball, that means that we, have a, we should get a stop, to be honest. Shamit fights over the screen. And look, gets a good hand there on that three. You know, Hardaway's been making that for the most of the series. But finally, he's got to miss eventually, and he does bad. And that's great job by Shamit. Now we go again. Another pick and roll with Luka. How do we guard it? Now Montrez is in instead of Zoo. Zoo was targeted in the pick and roll a lot last game. and he's done, He did better on that possession we just showed you. Now we switch. And he settles for a three. And guess what? We're going to take a contested three with Montrez guarding Luka. All day long. We don't want him getting to the rim. Trez is very intimidating, especially when you're running at someone. We'll take that. You just know he's not hitting that. But that's inexcusable from Paul George. And this is the beginning of what was an abysmal performance from him. Now, was it better than, you know, the stats show? Yeah, a little bit. But God, guys, I've always had doubts about him since the second we signed him because I thoroughly watched Oklahoma City play in the playoffs last year and I saw the iso ball, the low confidence. People wanted to talk about injuries all year. Let's break this down. We're going to break down PG and how he needs to be better if we're going to win the championship. Kawhi, look at this, attack mode. Going into the body, creating separation, falling away. I mean, that is straight out of the Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan playbook right there. And it's, it's just... Unbelievable that we have a player like this now. It's just, I can't thank him enough for choosing us. But look at this. Penetration by Marcus Morris. Good little pass to Trez. And Trez was back to the old Trez in this game. Look at that aggression. Look at that finish over Porzingis. And now we go again up to Kawhi. One-on-one against Dorian Finney-Smith. And he just had this look on his face, Kawhi. Like, nobody is going to stop me tonight. You got this, the, the Mavs are in kind of a zone, it seems, right now. See, as Porzingis is just kind of like... He's worrying about where Trez is, but he's not on Trez. Look Kawhi here. Gets in the post. The lost art in today's NBA. The post game. Mid post. Turn around. He can get that off all day. And quite frankly, I'd have him taking that shot every single time down. Seriously. So money. Now we have Lou Williams, right? Someone that's known as a defensive liability on our team. Guarding Seth. Get the handoff. Porzingis against Marcus Morris. We'll live with that all day. 14 on the shot clock. Step back three over Marcus with a hand in his face. Good D by Marcus. And, you know, if Porzingis wants to take contested threes off the dribble, we will take that all day. Off the catch, he's dangerous. But off the dribble, we'll take that. Look at Kawhi here. Staying aggressive. Kicks it. Lou. They're in the zone right now. Reggie, I say you don't settle for this. You take your open space. And force Dorian Finney-Smith to commit. Because right now, this is a pretty contested shot. You can see it. You force Dorian Finney-Smith to commit. 
and kick it back up to Kawhi at the top. But Reggie Jackson, I mean, he's on thin ice right now. I'm, you know, he's reverted back to his bench role, so I'm watching this game hoping, you know, he comes in and gives some positive impact maybe. Starts out with a miss. Next possession, they hit a three, right? Reggie Jackson comes and sets the high screen on, on Kawhi. He can pop out right here. I think this is what Kawhi wants him to do. Instead, he goes behind, which Kawhi needs to throw an over-the-top pass to get Reggie the ball here. They're completely not on the same page. Kawhi turns the ball over, and they score on it. And look at Kawhi's reaction. I love this. Look at that. He's yelling at Reggie Jackson. And Kawhi is not the most, you know, you don't see him yelling like that often. But I love it because Reggie Jackson needs to be yelled at with the decisions he's making. Anyway, I love this. We saw so much more of this in the seeding games. Jamichael Green in the post against Luka. Look at this. I love this. Old school basketball. Jump hook him to death. Oh, my goodness. That music to my ears. Oh, man. So here we go. Luka again. This time against Reggie Jackson. They put him in the pick and roll, and he fouls. Like, once again, we saw this. We talked about it. I don't want Reggie Jackson. I don't think he should ever be on Luka. Just ever. We're tied at 23 starting the second quarter. PG in the post. I like how he fed it. Jamichael against Luka. Guess what? Jump hook him to death, baby. He can't guard Jamichael in the post. I want to see him go to that every time. I love that jump hook Jamichael. I'm going to have to start calling him that. Seth against Reggie. Good D, good contest. Once again, remember we talked about keep forcing Seth in that mid-range area to take contested shots. And finally, Seth missed a contested mid-range. Thank God. Or should I say Steph, the way he's been playing. But this, look at this from PG. Comes off, and when I talk about momentum, we always talk about momentum. Lou Williams hit a three right before this, and you just knew after starting out 0 for 2 that that shot was going in by Paul after the stop. Momentum. And what do you know about momentum here? PG staying on the screen. Zoo doing a good job staying in between. Lou Williams doing a really good job helping right here. Because if we get this pass out to DeLon Wright, that's not a big deal. He hasn't done much danger, he hasn't done much trouble for us on the offensive end. And what does he do? He forces the Maxi Kleba. And Jamichael's, you know, he doesn't put his hand up, but he's right there. And Maxi's been the one we want shooting threes. So we'll take that all day. And coming down the court, momentum's high. You know what's about to happen right now. You know it. Oh, never mind. Stripped. PG. And that. It's a killer because he also missed the three from the exact same spot. He just made it. So I was hoping he would get some rhythm, and he didn't. But let's look at the play that just happened right here. Look at Lou Williams hustling and chasing DeLon right here. I mean, look at that. Have you seen that hustle from Lou Will this season? Like, I haven't. That was awesome. And now here we go. Look at this. PG is trying so hard to get going here. I'm going to freeze it. Trailer. Look up. He just wants to get himself going so badly. Oh, my God. And guess what happens when we make mistakes? I think you know. I think you know. Boom. And one of the things I loved about Doc's adjustments this game, and we got to give him a lot of credit, he called timeouts when they needed to be called. George sits the right side screen. Shamit comes off. And look at this. No settling for this jumper. He sees Boban down there, and he's not scared. Explosion. Landry Shamit. Oh, my goodness. With a capital L-A. And that's a huge confidence boost potentially for Sham. And now look, we get Luka on the switch against Zoo again. Can Zoo hold his own? Main thing is, you just don't want him going to the rim. Hands up, and he's not giving him room. Or, I'm sorry, he's not playing him too tight to get blown by. Jab step, he backs up a bit. But he makes sure he gets the hand up and can test the shot. I mean, that's great from Zoo. Good rebound by the claw. But Zubats has just been a standout so far on defense. Right side screen from PG and Kawhi. They switch. Kawhi got Luka. Tween cross to the rim. Help defense comes from Porzingis. He makes the right pass to Zoo. Kawhi in attack mode. And at this point, I was like, literally, Paul George needs to just give the ball to Kawhi every play. Because every time Kawhi gets the ball, good things are happening for us offensively. They have no answer for him at all. And the reason why Kawhi is a bona fide superstar and PG is a star is because superstars don't play well one game in the playoffs and then play like trash the next. Kawhi stays consistent, as you've seen the first three games. Why is that? Because he gets to the paint and gets to areas when his shot's not falling and dominates inside, just like the greats used to do. 
Anyway, let's look at this play. Hardaway Jr. going against the claw. Get that shit out of here, fool. Get out of here. That's the claw right there. And this is just like Mamba mentality right here. Like he, He's not letting us lose this game. PG now, right? Tween, spin. He's trying to get himself going. Don't mind the shot. But once again, Kawhi didn't touch the ball, I don't think, on that possession. I don't like that. Now when we're trying to create separation. And now look, Porzingis against Zoo. Look at Zoo sliding his feet, though. Look at that defense. And Kawhi comes to help. And look at the verticality. See, when people want to tell me that if it's a Zubat, we the Clippers have no rim protection, that straight up just shows me you don't watch the Clippers. Because if it's a Zubat, doesn't need to get a lot of blocks. He goes up vertically, takes the hits to the chest, and has played great defense all season. And his stats would look a lot better if Montrez wasn't such a good player and Doc would have played him more in the season. Let's look at this again. Hardaway against Marcus. Step back. I mean, we'll take that all day, dude. Cont He's not going to hit him every game, just like we said last time. Contested. Great D by Marcus. Miss. And when we get these stops, it forces us, you know, it gets the defense out of position. You're going to see examples of it later. But this is inexcusable right here. Trey Burke just blown by Paul George. It's like, okay, it happens one time. And then look at this. Next possession. PG gets the mismatch. He's got Trey Burke on him. Pass got to come right there. But PG and Shamit aren't on the same page. Shamit turns the ball over, but look at PG here. Just gets blown by by Trey Burke. Like, you got to backpedal, get in the stance, foul if you need to. And he's getting blown by by Trey Burke on two straight possessions, and he is playing awfully right now. I am livid at this point. But Kawhi against Maxi Kleba, look at this. Look how pretty this is. He reacts with the behind the back to throw him off balance. Look at the separation that's created there. Oh my goodness. He's so good. <laughs> PG doing a good job here, standing his ground. And who comes to help again? The claw. And gets the hands on it, or the claw on it. And look at this. Boop. Bang out, baby. Oh my goodness. Just stop messing with him. He's the best player in basketball. If you disagree, I don't even know what to tell you. Here we go. We got Maxi, and this play literally made me scream. So happy. Two screens, sham, catch, shoot, rhythm, bucket. And when that went in, I'm like, because these shooters, you know it. Look at Paul George. It's all confidence. He's lacking right now. Sham, it's been lacking for a while, but when he's confident shooting that ball, oh my goodness, it's at every level. No matter it's NBA, amateur, rec, doesn't matter. Your confidence is everything as a shooter. And when I saw Sham make that, I was like, oh, my God. And that comes from defense. It's not just offensive confidence. He's playing good defense. He's starting to feel like he's making positive contributions to the team. And once he gets that bang out on the baseline, he's hitting that three. I knew from this point forward, Shamit is going to be a lot better in this game. And when Shamit's playing well, we are a completely different team. Look at this. Now look what happens. Seth Curry is scared that he's going to hit the three. He comes up, and that gives Shamit the... Uh, ability to get by him and finish at the rim. And when Shamit is playing like this, he's like a better version of J.J. Redick to me. Because J.J. Redick, as great as he was, better shooter, whatever, he didn't play defense. And Shamit's not incredible at defense, but he's not bad. And when he's engaged like this, he has more versatility to his game than, than Redick did. And you see, and he's coming off our bench. Oh, no, never mind. He's starting right now, but still. You see that dunk he had? Like, J.J. Redick is never doing that. Pick and roll now with Luka. Marcus gets over the screen. Look at Lou Williams hustling. Look at that effort from Lou. Look at that hand up, kicks it out. We want Maxi Kleber shooting. Zoo's out there. Lou Williams on the defensive end. And now Liberty go, ISO, uh-oh. Kawhi in the post. You just watch him work all day. Surveys, surveys, bodies. A, he doesn't fall for the fake. Maxi does a good job. He stays on his, goes into the body. Look at this defense. I mean, this is good defense by Maxi. But we just got the best player in the world, you know? See, the reason why I say Kawhi is the best is because Giannis doesn't have the skill yet. LeBron's lost a step. AD's good, but he doesn't have that same authority to games. And then James Harden, I mean, <laughs> I don't need to go to that. Anyway, look at Lou here against Maxi. Backs it out, surveys the floor, crossover. Look at the drive. Attracts Tim Hardaway Jr., kicks it. And one of the big things we talked about in the last game, making open threes. And one of those guys was Marcus Morris Sr. And what does he do here? Knocks it down. 14-point lead, baby. Marcus Morris Sr. Look at this. Lou, when he's going like this, it pays such dividends for our team. Because that's not the best. 
you know, possession. But when he's hitting that and we know he can hit it, it's just we are so unbelievable because that's our third best player. I don't mind that shot from PG in the mid-range area and the, the floater, but to air ball, it just shows you how low his confidence is right now. And here we go, down 10, right? Mavericks making a little run of it. Pick and roll Porzingis. Morris gets over the screen. I would like to see PG kind of help a little more, get in front of Luka so then he can kick it to Finney Smith because he hadn't made a three the whole game, so I would love to keep having Finney Smith shoot. Luka gets into the area, lobs it up beautifully to Porzingis. And I love this. Doc called a timeout immediately on the on – the, I think it was a 7-0 run. 7-0 run, he calls a timeout immediately. And look what happens off the timeout. Momentum stopped yet again. Pick and roll, kicks it. That's not an open shot. But Marcus Morris Sr. is capable of hitting tough shots. And that's the thing I love about this game, his game. Mid-range, contested, you know, threes, whatever. He's improved so much, especially with his handle too. But this is what I love from Paul George. I think this may have been my favorite play of the game from him. Pushing the ball, not looking to do any of that cutesy shit. Look up, pass to Marcus. What does Marcus do? Great left-hand entry. Finds the mismatch with Luka against Zoo, And Zoo jump hooks him to death. Love that. That's great basketball. That starts on the defensive end and gets us mismatches down the other way. It all starts with our defensive energy, guys. Let's look at it here. Shamit gives it to Kawhi. The claw drives understands the, the attraction of the defense that he gets and makes the right pass right in his shooter's pocket. That's much better. We saw Kawhi throw some poor passes in the last game. And who's shooting with confidence now? Sham it! 15-point game. Love what we're doing. Look at this. Good D by Marcus. He gets blown by at the end. But guess what? We want them to kick it to Maxi Kleba. Boom. Getting the shots we want. And now what happens on the offensive end? Now we're down 10. Kawhi. Look at this right here. I just want to rewind it for a sec. He's coming off. Look at Seth here. You reach, I teach. Reactionary. Kicks it, and Reggie Jackson didn't open shots. We need him to do that. Big time. That was his first of two. And now, once again, going back to that Montrez returning back to form. Look at this. Goes right up Porzingis with the classic running hook. Finisher. Now we're up 14. Look at that relentlessness from Trez. And now we're up 11. Look what happens here. A little screen from Reggie. Kawhi splits. Goes to the rim. Kicks it. Extra swing. Marcus Morris Sr. For three. And that all starts from guess who? The claw. And this is just basketball nirvana right here. Look at this. Size up. Dorian Finney-Smith can't guard me. Oh, my God. Twink, twink. Cross. <laughs> Takes the contact, and one, best player in the world. He's on the Clippers. Can you believe it? No, it's not a fake video. It's a real video. The Claw. And here we go, up 14. The Claw, does he want to stop and pop and be lazy? Does, does he want to be a Paul George settle for jumpers? Nope. To the rim. Get off me, MKG, little boy. Oh, uh, he's so good. Last possession of the quarter. Look at Reggie Jackson. Look at Trez. They switch it. Look at Trez. And look at this hustle by Amir Coffey. Make the most of your minutes. And look at this. Amir Coffey on the ground gets the ball off. Shamit for three. Bingo at the buzzer, baby. And look at Shamit's confidence now. And here's the thing about this fourth quarter. The Mavericks gave us a little push. But look at Lou here. And I can, I can watch him do this all day. And there's something so satisfactory about Lou going left. He's so good in that area. Let's watch it again. And Lou, like with last year's team... Like It was like expected for him to score. It was a different feeling when he scored. And when I see Lou making these shots, like these pull-up threes, his classic going left shot with these guys, it makes me so comfortable because it's like when we have a player of that caliber as our third guy, it just shows you how hard we can be to beat when he's doing that. Look at Paul George making the right read here. They send two at him. He finds Jermichael on the pick and pop. And Jermichael, who was 0 for 3 from 3 in the last game, we needed that and he hit it. And it's just a matter of the Clippers guys making open shots. Let's watch this play right here. Pick and roll. Maxi Kleba and Trey Burke. And Trez is up on that screen. Look at that contest. Beautiful. Also, these are bad decisions by Dallas. And that's the thing. They're not going to be smart every game and flawless. And look what happens on the, with that stop. Look what happens. PG makes a good pass. Trez's hands there were suspect compared to his usual self. But he goes up and we get foul shots. 
And that comes from defense and Paul George looking up. Same thing, look at it, look at it here. Trey Burke, right side screen. Oh, that's the same play, my bad. Almost done here, boys and girls. So 14-point game now, right? Lou takes the space. Look at this. This is just chemistry right here. Boom. That's beautiful. Lou and Trez, man. I just love watching them play together. But see, Dallas makes a push now. And now we're only down, we're only up 10. So whose turn is it to take over the game? This is when you talk about the all-time greats, the best players, taking over the game and willing your team to victory. He set, gets two cents at him, but he gets the turnover here, right? Not the right read, what he should have done. And this is good defense by Dallas, but... The skip. The skip to the corner right here to Paul. It's a hard pass, but... You know, everybody makes mistakes. Kawhi can make a mistake when he's done all that. And I love, look at Doc. Immediately off the bench, calls a timeout. Stopping the momentum before it gets dangerous when we're only up eight. So what do we do off the timeout? I love this from PG. He acts like he's going to score, but he doesn't actually shoot. He feeds it to his best player for the three because he's the GOAT of the Clippers. Honestly, guys, if he makes it past the second round this year, he's the GOAT to the Clippers for me, man. Look at this, guys. 10-point game now. He just sees how Zeus slips. The defense throws two at him, but he sees the open lane. And look what he does. Dorian's afraid to help because of Paul George. I don't know idea why he did that because P has not been hitting. Why would you let Kawhi rim run? That's stupid. Anyway, bang out southpaw spike as you hear Brian Seaman say in commentary. 120 to 108. Sham it. Look at this extra swing. Look at Paul. He could have settled for this. He would have done that last game. And look what he did. On the drive, he can get by Dorian whenever he wants. Notices the help. Lob to Zoo, and I think that play was the dagger and cherry on top of the Sunday. So main takeaways, it all starts with the defense, Clipper Nation. All start to the defense, and, you know, our role players and our other guys hitting shots. Marcus Morris hitting threes, and he's been spectacular every game. Loving Marcus Morris right now. Both ends. Shamit hitting shots makes a world of difference. Jermichael Green hitting shots. Lou and Trez doing their thing. Honestly, just if once we can get Paul George going and Reggie Jackson being a little smarter— Wow. The championship is ours. It's all about Paul George, guys, because Kawhi Leonard is just going to continue to be the best player in the NBA like he is and will us to victory. I mean, that was an inspired performance. We have just never, I love Chris Paul and I'm Blake Griffin to death. We have seriously just never had a player like this. Make sure to subscribe to Dime Dropper Pod on every platform. Follow me on Twitter, Dime Dropper Pod, and at OTHLAC on Twitter. And yeah, let me know what you all think. Go Clips 2-1. Let's get it.